Hi, I'm Chris Haddock, and this is the 24 Hours Podcast. T minus four, three, two, one. The following is a 24 Hours Podcast. Can we talk a little bit about the comparisons between uh, American uh, networks and Canadian networks, for example? I mean, obviously, we're a, li- a little bit uh, more liberal with our content up here. Uh, what, can, you, can you compare the two countries in terms of what are acceptable standards? And, of course, your, your dramas are a little bit more edgy, a little bit more more mature-oriented, I would say. Well, uh, yeah, I'm trying to aim, aim directly for an adult market. I'm trying to actually, when I, when I think about what I'm writing or I'm trying to cook up a show or I try to, you know, really uh, even... Uh, uh, specifically, you know, the uh, dialogue and stuff like that. I'm aiming for the market which, you know, you and I used to go to the movies to see really good adult entertainment. And that's kind of disappeared because the movies are now being marketed to really much younger teenage audiences, big spectacle kind of approaches. And so there's a big, I think, a big vacuum for adult entertainment. Uh, and uh, that's what I'm trying to fill on television. And uh, the U.S., uh, uh, the U.S., I've worked for CBS and I worked for a, C- a show called The Handler, which was uh, uh, short-lived, critically, ex- you know, accepted very early on and stuff. And I had a kind of taste of the, uh, uh, really the level of interference that you get from uh, the executives in the studios. And they're not always the same. I, I, I brought uh, CBS and Viacom to, together. CBS ordered the show. I went out and found Viacom to be the producing studio. And they, they immediately have different interests. Viacom wants to sell this thing worldwide, so they really want to use old television stars and people who recognize around the world. And I'm going, the nature of my show means that I don't want anybody recognizable. So you have, you're immediately hitting a compromise. CBS is kind of embracing that idea, but they kind of said, well, right from the beginning that uh, they wanted, you know, half a dozen people in the ensemble because their theory was, you know, the audience gets used to, uh, you know, they come for the stars, and they get used to, and I'm going, man, that blows the whole concept of, of undercover people. You're not supposed to know who's who. So right away, it was like they embraced the concept, but kind of undercut it right, right from the beginning. And you can't resist those. And here I have a little bit more of a, a more autonomy and more, a little more creative autonomy, and that's really what I kind of uh, went to. The U.S., there's no doubt that uh, their mainstream... Uh, networks. Uh, I'm not talking about the cables, about HBO or or, Sh- or Showtime, which is what Sh- HBO, Showtime, those things. They, that's where all the filmmakers who are no longer allowed to make adult films are, are drifting. So really, those cable stations are getting the uh, or, or nets are getting the the, be- the best artists in the world coming to them with original ideas. And there's some freedom there. They're developing some stuff there. Uh, I still think that there's a, there's a hesitancy to actually. Uh, critique anything that's going on in U.S. society. I think that that's particularly under the under the, the latest sort of a conservative governments down there. That anybody who actually critiques uh, politics like gets slammed hard. Whether it's the Dixie Chicks who get virtually uh, blacklisted, and so uh, and I think it makes performers and artists timid. And I certainly I certainly uh, ran into that a little bit in the U.S. I found that some of the performers down there were really concerned about the political slant that their character might take and they, and they were really resistant to kind of playing some some of the some of the stuff so I think that there's a the stakes are there are, are, are much higher there if you get banished to the hinterlands down there for something uh, they, they're really they won't hear from you for a while you have to really crawl, crawl your way back so I think that it's a little less forgiving and it's uh, in uh, uh, a society that uh, is uh, able to criticize itself. Here in Canada, I like to think it's a little, we're a little bit more able to do that. Uh, 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 and certainly there's less, you know, there's less attention paid to entertainment here, just generally across the board. We don't promote the way we do. We don't kind of get back behind a show and say, man, this is the greatest thing in the world, because that's not the nature of the Canadian entertainment industry and probably not the nature of sort of the Canadian uh, personality, really, to hype, hype itself beyond existence. So there's those big things that are sort of, uh, they, they all kind of mix up. I went, went, going down and working in the U.S., I really, I thought previously that I kind of understood Americans. You know, my parents are both American, and uh, I kind of had a, a, an idea that I understood a little bit. Uh, but it wasn't until I went down and worked in the in the sort of the belly of the beast in L.A. that I understood the vast differences between Canadians and Americans. And... Uh, and, and therefore, there were really huge differences between the, the between the networks. The positive things down there are is that is that you, if you walk in the room with a good idea, they really back you. There's no sort of like, man, this could go the whole way. There's a sense that yes, there's huge potential. So there's that great kind of possibility that is always 
uh, lurking there that you know that they they'll, if they believe in you and there's a there's even a taste that you might hit it they'll back you 100 percent which is what happened with the handler the first four episodes were out of the gate it was like boom we were going to be the hottest show uh, on air and uh, and then we crashed of course but <laughs> abruptly but uh, but at least down there you get the sense of man if this is this is a gold mine let's dig and uh, here it's much uh, it's much 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 harder for uh, artists to gain the confidence of networks and for networks to back them and to say well we believe in you we're not going to fiddle too much with it, it, it it's a, it's much harder because the potential up here is is really the artists don't have the hand, upper hand here in terms of uh, of the networks if you're a hot writer and a hot creator the networks down south will back you because they know it's the writer producer who 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 runs the show up here it's been a battle for me uh, uh, for the 20 years I've been working to uh, with the networks to acknowledge that uh, you know that the writer is really the creator of the, uh, of the product and it's not the uh, not the line producer mentality here that really it's the numbers crunchers who should be running the entertainment industry up here I really think that that way of thinking has hurt Canadian entertainment there's a lot of we've, we've produced some really good stuff we've, we've produced our fair share of real dreck and, and and I think that the you'll, often you'll hear is people say is that Canadian? Well, Canadian TV doesn't interest me, or uh, it's you know that looks so Canadian and stuff. Well, there's reason it looks like that, man. It looks Canadian because the line producer cheaping out on it, and they hasn't gone to the you know hasn't yet released the reins to uh, writers and creatives who can kind of figure out how to make things look a little bit better if you give them a the leash. But anyway, that's a battle. What uh, what do you expect for uh, for intelligence? Give us a, give us a scenario. Where, you see it being a hit in Canada? Yeah, I think it's going to be a huge hit in Canada. I actually think it's going to be a hit abroad. I, I think that, and I think we're going to get in get it in. Uh, there's already huge interest in the U.S., so I think we're going to get it in the U.S. It took me seven years to get Da Vinci yeah. into the U.S. And they're like that. And they're loving it now. I wish it had happened earlier because yeah. it would have been, been a, sort of been more responsive to it. But uh, uh, and that's been fantastic, and that's drawn a lot of attention to sort of my next productions. Is uh, we're seeing weekly the the, the numbers in the U.S. Are seeing like three to five million people are watching Da Vinci now in the U.S. That's and, and it's way more than watches it up here. And Vancouver doesn't disguise itself. Vancouver plays Vancouver. Vancouver. Well, you know, yeah. I was like, I'm a total advocate yeah. for Vancouver, and uh, I really care about the city and its uh, what's happening specifically. And I found as a writer, the uh, the the more specific you are about your location, actually, the more universal it becomes. That's the irony. When Canadian drama was stuck for a long time, two people trying to make universal kind of could be anywhere kind of shows thinking that that's going to catch on it's not true yeah. it's like the opposite is true so i'm really in intelligence vancouver's vancouver every every bit as much as vancouver was in uh, in da vinci so i'm trying to make it specific it's a little more uh, I, i'm a, it's a little it's certainly less socially kind of uh, focused and I'm, I'm more sort of character driven in this one and uh, I really, uh, this is going to be a huge piece of entertainment. I think people, are, there's a million reasons for people to watch the show. So I think people are really going to like it. Well, I know you got to get back to this. Great talk. Like yeah, pleasure to too. Thanks, Thanks very Chris. much. All Thank right. you very much. 24hours.ca